All right, how to do error handling in these Next.js server actions. So let's say I have a simple form here. I have a, I've collapsed it just for simplicity here. It's using a server action. This is the server action. And right now it doesn't contain any mistakes. But what if we made a mistake? Or what if something goes wrong in this server action? How do we output a message to the client or maybe a toast message? And so just to give you an example of the final output of this video, what we're going to get here is that if I make a mistake here in the server action and I try to add something here, if I now click add, let's see what happens. So here I'm getting uh, an error message here toast message on the client because there was a problem on the server right? So that's what we're going to achieve in this video all right so let me undo this and let's start from a clean slate here so here what we have is an h1 on the page a form and here we're mapping over all the to do's this is all a server component and in a server component you can fetch data like this and here we have a form the form has this action attribute with a so-called server action right the server action i have defined in this file if i want i could also put it here because it's a server component but uh, for organizational purposes I put it in its own file. So in this server component, what we're doing is we're getting data from what we add here and then we try to add it to our database i'm using prisma here and then i'm revalidating the path all right now typically you do want to wrap this in a try catch because adding something to a database could go wrong so realistically wrap this like this so try we're going to attempt to create a to-do in our database if that goes wrong and prisma throws an error or some error is thrown in the try block we want to catch it here and then we want to output something on the client remember this is all server code this is only running on the server so now we need to send something back here to the client so we can deal with that right so here we're catching the error just to get started let's just try returning a normal javascript object here with an error property that will just say something something went wrong right, let's just try returning this to the client okay so this is all the server so now if something goes wrong and i say oops it's content 2 which doesn't exist so there's going to be an error thrown we're going to catch that error and now we're going to return this javascript object to the client so now we come to the client here what we need to do is we just we don't immediately want to invoke the server action we may want to have some some, some client side interactivity here. So let's remove this because we don't immediately want to invoke the server action. We also want to have some client side code, client action. So we have server action, right? Only runs on the server, but then we can also have an action function here that will run on the client. And you can put your server action in the client action. So I can actually just call that client action and that will take in that form data of type form data. And in here, we can then invoke this server action, the add to do, right? Let's mark that as async and I will say await here before we invoke the server action we need to pass the, the form data to the server action and now before we actually invoke that server action you may want to do other things here like reset the form or do some client side validation i'll have a separate video on how to do validation make sure you subscribe so we could do that and also what we could do here now is we want to we want to grab that error that we get back from the server so what we can say when we invoke the server action assign the result to this variable right so here if there's an error we're going to return a plain javascript object Otherwise, we actually don't return anything. So only if there's an error, we will return something here. So then we can just check if result. And remember, sometimes we don't return anything. So I'm going to say optional. And if there is an error, if there actually is an error, we want to show the error. Right? This is basically the logic, the more realistic logic of dealing with these actions here. Now, this won't work. So here I can now assign this function to the to the action attribute here. If I save here, oh, let's just see what happens. If I save here, we're going to get an error because now we're trying to add client side interactivity to something here in a server component. This is all still server component. So to make that work, we need to refactor this to a client component. And that's not a big problem. That's just the real world. So I'm going to create a new component here. I will just create that form and I will quickly create that here form. And we're just going to put the form in there. So I'm going to remove it from here, add the form here. And then we want to use that client component here in our server component, right? So that's no problem. You can put like this and I'm going to import this. All right. So then we have our client action. I'm going to remove it from here and I'm going to put it here. All right. So this is now the new page. Right, server component still. We can still fetch data, map over that here. And realistically, once you need to add client-side interactivity, you're going to refactor something to a client component. That's what we've, what we've done now. So I can save here. I need to mark this as a client component. So I'm going to put the use client directive at the top and we actually don't need this import and now in our client action here we are invoking this server action we need to import it here so i'm importing that now all right so now i'm going to save here I, let's see i'm going to save here as well so let's see what we'll get now okay so now we don't get any errors so everything seems to be working so now we can do something we can right we have an error now in our server action so now what we're going to get here is result.error so we can do something so let's try alerting the result.error 
I'm gonna save here and I'm gonna try test to add something to the page and let's see what happens. I'm gonna get add and we get a warning, an alert, something went wrong. Right, so now we are getting this message from our server action. Right, so here we're sending an object with the error, something went wrong. And that's what we're now outputting on the client. Right, so you can combine this client action. You can just provide a function here. Essentially, I could define it in line here as well. And actually that may even be more common. So I'm going to just in line here. Right, so you can, you, you can pass a function here. You're gonna get the form data from next Js right here, so very handy. I don't need to add a separate function here. I can mark this as async, and now it's in line here. So let me put it like this. All right. All right. So we want to output a toast message. We're going to use React Hot Toast, a very popular library. So I'm going to install that React Hot Toast. All right. So I've installed it. First step is to determine where you want to show that toast on the page. So in Next.js here, you need to go to your layout uh, because typically you do want to put it in your layout file and I'm going to put it right here. So I've put it right here in the body and um, you need to use the toaster component from React Hot Toast and then you can provide, you can specify where it should be positioned. So I'm doing it in the top right. I think that's the most common. Most people are used to that. Sometimes it's also bottom right. Um, you can also do it in the center, but I have said that the toast message should be displayed in the top right. So this is just basically the placeholder and now we need to invoke uh, a toast function when we want to actually show that so instead of using alert what we can do is we can import a toast function from react hot toast instead of using alert we can say toast dot error so now if I save here and there's still an error here, right? So we still have this issue here where we have a typo. We're turning an object here with error. So this should still error out. So now let's try it again. I'm going to click add. And now we get a very cool toast message on the client. And what we can also do if there is no error, so if everything went all right, we can show success. Actually, Copilot already suggested for me, toast.success. So now if I save here and remove the error from our server action here. So if I save here and now we're not really returning anything. Um, so we should go into the else block here. So I'm going to click, I'm going to write test two. I'm going to press add here and we see a success message to do edit. Now, if you don't want to use toast messages, you can still use a state variable, right? So you could have some kind of errors, uh, state, right? Just an empty string initially. And maybe all the way at the bottom of the form, you're going to display an error if that, if it exists, right? So just something like this. So if there is an error, you just display that as a message. So then instead of using the toast function, you would set the error like this. Right, and instead of using toast.success, you would simply make it an empty string again. Right, I need to import this. Right, so now if I save this, if there's an error in our server action, I'm gonna write test again. And now we get this message. Right, so this is a more realistic scenario with the server actions, because typically you do wanna have client-side interactivity functionalities. So you're gonna have to refactor things to a client component. This is an example of that. Now, one last thing, here we're hard coding the error. Right? Realistically, you wanna get the message from the actual error that was, that was thrown here. So realistically, we would do something like error.message. Now, if you try doing this, TypeScript will complain and TypeScript will say error is of type unknown because what we catch here, we don't really know what the error is going to be. In JavaScript, you can throw anything. You can throw the number five. You can throw a string. You can throw an array. So this could be the number five, right? And you cannot say five.message. It doesn't exist. Right? It doesn't work like that. So here, this is actually typed as unknown as it's called. I have separate videos and that highly recommend check out my other TypeScript videos. In the past, this was typed as any by default. Default. And any means anything goes. So now the error is disappears, but this is not really the proper way of doing it in TypeScript, right? So we don't know what it's going to be. Unknown is a more precise type. And since we don't know, we cannot just access that message on here. So I have a utility function to extract messages from these errors in my server actions. And I'm going to paste it here because I have a separate video on this. So this function is called get error message. And you just pass in that error here and it will extract a message as a string for you. So instead, we're going to use that function here. I'll explain it in a second. So we just call this function. We just pass that error, right? I don't need to type unknown here. That's actually the default these days, error unknown. We pass the error to get error message. This function takes in that error. It's going to be of type unknown and it returns a string, right? So here we specify the message is going to be a string. And first, maybe they, they actually threw an error that was actually created with that error class that we have in, in JavaScript, right? So maybe an error was actually thrown like this, new error. So then we go in this first if block and you can actually just use that message, right? So that's, there is actually a message property on that error object. No problem. You can use it. Maybe they threw a normal JavaScript object and maybe there was also a message in there, right? So maybe they threw, you can throw just an object literal with a message like that. Not an instance of the error class, but just an object literal. You go into this if block. The message property could technically be a number, right? So the value for that message could be a number or something else. So we want to cast that to a string or maybe they actually threw an actual string. 
So we can just use that as the message. And otherwise we have some defaults here, something went wrong. Right, so this function will always give you some message and that's what we're gonna return to the client here. So now if I save this, we still have this typo here. And now I try again, test five, I'm gonna press add. And now you can see we get a more specific error message. If you wanna complete walkthrough of how to properly extract an error message here with TypeScript, check out my other videos. Let's right, so make sure you've mastered the fundamentals. In my React and Next.js course, we also talk about TypeScript, specifically in the context of Next.js and React. So check out my course on that. Also make sure you've mastered JavaScript itself. It makes things much easier. And of course, also CSS. I have courses on them both. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.